from trying to ice dye tie dye for the very first time to running my own small side tie dye business, this is my one year journey down the ice dye tie dye rabbit hole. I am living for the better good of all, aka Diverse Design. Here to tell you the little story and journey, and also give anybody who's trying to come up either in the business or just as a hobby, just some ideas along the way. And at the end, we'll wrap it up with the 10 top things that I've learned in this year. Let's get started. This whole thing got started when I found out that my oldest granddaughter, Veronica, was into tie-dye. And I thought, oh, Grandpa will make her one by hand by himself. And she'll be like, oh, wow, that was so cool he did that. It's like one of those memories she'll have for the rest of her life. So on to the internet I went, trying to find what was out there. And one of the first key things that I found and one of the first suggestions I have for anybody who's new is Jeremy St. Rebel and the Jammin' on tie-dye studios jeremy saint rebel is a character he's cool i i love the man to death um he they, they have some amazing tapestries in the backgrounds of their videos and they're a great great source to get your basics your abcs like your pleat folds and your, your scrunches your spirals your spiders all the key basic elements your abcs your building blocks it is a great beginning resource and he is a great guy if i did fall down alice's rabbit hole he would be the caterpillar sitting on the mushroom smoking the hookah pipe and i mean that in the best of the ways jeremy you, you are the coolest buddy I, I i definitely love you so I went out and got some tulip tie-dye, the liquid tie-dye, and gave it a shot from what I learned. And I was happy with the results of what I had learned in how to do the ties and the fold to get the patterns to come out cool. I wasn't real thrilled with the, the dye itself. Back on to the internet I went, sorry about that, a guy named Crispy. It was his psychedelic mindscape video. Uh, definitely look that up. It's just the coolest piece of work. It, it, it's definite art. And he, Crispy is truly the king of the emblems. I haven't seen any of his stuff around for a number of years, but he is a definite master. Um, so we, we miss we miss you, Crispy. And so I decided, okay, I'm going to give this a serious try. So off I went to the one place that you go for, for dye, and that's another point that I'll give everybody. Dharma Trading Company, I'm not sponsoring, sponsored by them. I don't get anything from them. I don't get a discount or anything yeah i love these people to death they're just such a pleasure to deal with just super super people and the dye is second to none i bought a you know a bunch of colors and I gave it a shot on october 30th 2019 and we got boom i was blown away from my very first try i said wow that is just awesome I call this one the fox because the emblem in the center looks kind of like a red fox head. And you'll start, as you do this for a while, you tie-dye for a while, you'll start to see, in any art really, you'll start to see like faces and demons and things, all, all kind of strange things in there. It's actually called periodolus, animate object in an inanimate object. So like and if you look down underneath where I said the fox is, that in that orange band in the center it almost to me looks like these two orange flame demons demons trying to kiss so it is kind of crazy and so i said all right well let me let me try i bought a six pack of shirts so let me try it on some more and i gave it a shot and it was pretty cool i i was really enjoying myself it wasn't really what i thought my granddaughter would be into but i was pretty pleased nothing as good as the first one but i said you know hey i'm gonna just keep trying so back on to the internet we went Next, I found Kurt Wallace, a fellow Scotsman. Uh, he works on, uh, you know, a lot of pages called Tie-Dyed Skies in Columbia. Great master when it comes to two things in particular. When it comes to sunsets on the ocean and when it comes to, like, Phoenix-type designs, like these, like, big wing, wing designs, the man is the master. But I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and give it a try. So I bought, you know, a couple little pieces of fabric, a some real nice uh, cotton flannel from Walmart and gave it a shot and I was pretty happy with the result came out pretty good 
everything came out the way I wanted it to, even the little beach I had put at the bottom, so I said, okay, let me try some more. And while the results, again, weren't as good as the first one I tried, um, I was still happy and pleased with them. So I said, you know what, let me try one more thing with this. And I tried a long sleeve shirt and I was ecstatic because I was able to carry the sleeves pattern all the way down to match the, the trunk of the shirt. So I was learning more and more and more. And that's, you know, really what you do. You keep pushing yourself. You keep trying things you haven't done before and you definitely videotape I would definitely tell you that because there's so many cool things I had come out and I didn't videotape them so I have no idea how I got it done um, same thing with colors you, you know write them down for each video because and I know most people won't but it, it'll pay off in the long run in the end so I I try his Phoenix ones and I just can't get his Phoenix the Phoenix wings to come out right Although I have to admit, I, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't unhappy with the results on, on any of them. I know all three will sell and I was ecstatic with the middle one. I wish you could see this in real life because that whole center top section looks like this humongous vortex that's just sucking in. It is so three dimensional. I've never done a piece of art like this. I used to do acrylic pouring before this. And I've never seen anything with the kind of depth that this thing has. It's so cool. And then it looks like a little amphitheater in the center. That actually has 3D depth to it. And then in the upper right, we got a cool set that looked kind of like these little two red angels facing each other and another kind of yellow angel that you can't really see the detail of in this picture. I'm kind of separating them. So again, I was happy, but I, they still weren't quite what I think my my granddaughter would have been expecting so back onto the internet we go we find casual collision casual collision probably gave me insight into why you don't take shortcuts in in tie-dye the man is meticulous he, he, I, I, I still to this day cannot match even close to how everything that he ties after he after he does his folds and he ties everything he can lay ice exactly flat across the whole thing without any border around it and it and the ice all stays. I always have rounded edges and things that I can't do. So I, I definitely admire the man's meticulousness. He really taught me a lot about V pattern designs, which has paid off. Well, this is what actually happened once I tried the V patterns and I was really happy on the one on the left got, you know, again, that, that depth feel, um, you know, some, a lot of those little fan folds created what looked like these little half cylinders and like giving it an actual, th you know, three dimension look and feel. So I, I was real happy with these. Gave my granddaughter her, hers. We tried, I tried sweatshirts. Sweatshirts were a little bit more of a challenge. These were the first ones. So didn't exactly come out the way I expected. She was still ecstatic, but I said, I got more work to do. So I wanted to do some so I'd try a diamond emblem. I wanted to try to work on something really simple first, but I wanted to make it look like everything radiated out of that diamond. So boom, tried it on a tap tapestry. Of, this is about 54 inches by 42 inches, and I was ecstatic. And fortunately, I had videotaped this one, so I, you know, I was able to go back and look at what could I do on that diamond emblem that got that in the emblem to actually have a, a 3D again effect as if, you know, it has some depth to it. It actually looks like in the bottom part, it looks like there are parts that come out towards you. Um, and the, toward the top part, it looks like it kind of recedes away from you. So again, I got some nice effect. I got to play with some colors, um, found a great com color combination of Palomino Gold, chartreuse and golden brown the three of them together always make these really pretty pretty golden and brown rings i found kingfisher blue in here that was another great color to find so i played a little bit more with did a couple shirts did a video on the one on the left it, it's a lot of fun to make these things radiate but again wanted to keep pushing the envelope needed to needed to keep trying to grow trying to get better so i wanted to go back and, and keep working on getting better at the v 
um, patterns and, and learning more about design with the bead patterns because there's so many elements to doing tie-dye to really consider when you really want to do some spectacular pieces. So I started to play with color. I wanted to do something like, like flames and I really wasn't successful with just making something look like a bunch of flames working its way up a shirt. So I decided to go a different route and take the V patterns and just play a little bit with that and kind of make them flamish looking. So I call this my En Fuego collection. And then I started to see a lot in on TV where lemon lime was kind of being big kind of color combination. So found the combination of new emerald green and lime pop and oh my god I loved it. I used it to play with learning how the different spacing of the lines and the number of lines of the pattern of these that you actually tie definitely changes the, the look and, and the feel of the shirt. So I got to learn more about creativity by playing with things like that. Like don't just do a V pattern. Do a V pattern and separate the lines different distances and, and with more and less lines. Like maybe do them um, do shirts with line, three V patterns, three V lines, but do each one space say four inches apart. And then do the next shirt the same thing, three V pat lines, but do do them four inches apart. So you do one three inches and one four inches, and you kind of see what the difference is. Um, and the same thing with, with playing with the number of lines. You know, if you look at these shirts, the ones with only two V lines have a very different feel than the ones that have three lines. So we, you know, we just played around a lot, learned a lot about color, and I said, you know what, I'm getting serious about this, and I'm starting to get so many pieces that I'm going to need, need to start changing some things. So I got my brother, he does asbestos removal, and he built me a containment room so I could store everything in. And then I went back to Dorma Trading Company and stocked up on a whole bunch of dye. Went to Amazon and bought a whole bunch of shirts because I didn't have a wholesaler then. And then I bought from uh, storesupply.com, I bought two oversized double racks um, that are awesome. And I began to store everything on. Went and got a U Euromax Easy pop-up tent, a 10 foot by 10 foot crafters tent. Let me tell you something folks, this thing is awesome. You'll need help w with somebody else to get that top on, but w um, you know, nice and tight and secure but once you do it doesn't you don't take it back off you just fold the tent up and, and unfold it with that top already on well that being said you know it'd probably take about 15 minutes with somebody else's help to get that top on but once that's done i'm a 58 year old man i'm able to put this thing up by myself in less than five minutes and take it down the same way. It takes me almost exactly five minutes to put it up or take it down. So I would highly recommend though that uh, you buy the additional weights for it. I, I bought four 10 pound weights because these things can really sail, especially if you put the walls up on it because I bought one that has walls on it. Um, came to about $230 with tax and shipping. With everything ready, I went out for my very first sale. This was in March 21st of 2020 and I just had I had my second sale which was April 4th. It was just a local um, town yard sale where everybody in the town has it you know on the same day. And man did I have some success here. I met some of the most awesome awesome people positive energy people just super 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 um had my display much better because the first time my display wasn't real all real great but i, I had bought some uh, some mannequin little half mannequins that that hang up that i could do for displays as well and it it looked super the the people loved it i, I sold 40 pieces made about 480 dollars so i i was starting starting to get some of my investment back and considering I had invested about three, I think it's time to get up on YouTube. So I went out and I learned and learned and learned. I, I spent, you know, like two weeks, night after night after my full-time day job, scouring how to do video editing, how to do sound editing, how to do 
YouTube thumbnails. How do you do YouTube? Hey, yeah, I had to learn it all from scratch. So I, I appreciate those who bear, you know, bore with me through those first couple videos that I put out because they, they were pretty rough. They were good videos, but I just really didn't know what I was doing with a, with a lot of it. So, you know, they, they came out a lot longer than, than they really needed to be. So I, I got a lot. My learning curve was very short. But I continued to play. Um, really wanted to try anything that I, I could do. I didn't want to just do t-shirts. I figured if I'm going to sell, you know, I need to do different things. So I started doing everything that I could get my little hands on. I was doing turtleneck. I was doing tank top, oversized tank tops, muscle t-shirt. I was doing uh, capri I did dusters. I did designer hoodies. I did dresses. And then came my third sale. It was until July. I had to replenish, you know, kind of my stock from the first two sales. And there I had my best bud. I uh, could not have done my third sale without him. He was awesome, awesome help. I love this guy. He is my stepson, my best bud. Let's take a little look at, the, at that third show. Here I am with my main man, Eddie Jeremiah McCray. My assistant for the day. Could not do this without him. Here we have our setup, got our tent set up. Couple racks of tie dye going. Just getting started here. We still got some more to set up. We'll see you in a bit. And then we just have you know a little bit more video of me making a sale, which is always a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, my my buddy Eddie was just awesome uh, when he wasn't videoing he was the one actually he kept running up wanting to give you know offer people the bags and every he was just everybody was like oh my god he's so helpful and so polite so I even gave him a bonus for working that day I paid him for working the day but I, I even gave him a, a bonus raise because he did such an awesome job way to go Eddie Jeremiah McCray Again, my setup was, was, you know, a whole lot better. It was an awesome day. Definitely could not have been happier. Again, you know, got to meet some great people. And, um, you know, they really enjoyed what they saw. And there he was, my man. He was happy to. So then it was back to work, trying to learn and grow. And the way I was taking the V in both directions, the top half as a standard V and the bottom half as an inverted V. You know, continually trying to push myself and grow. Continuing that idea, I said, you know what, let me combine this with the diamond emblems that I've really been working on and really love doing and really start to specialize in that. And I'll mix the diamond emblem with, you know, V patterns and other different patterns. So I continued that, that idea and that's where I really found like the Kingfisher blue and Peacock blue along with that chartreuse palomino gold golden brown combination um, and you need a green with that like um, usually a darker green like a better blue green or a new emerald green and still kept trying to do you know other new things i hadn't done before i have a video for this one um, it's an arc fan um, boy that that die actually I only dyed maybe half the distance of what you see. The rest of that bled uphill. I, you got to check out the video. It is insane. I did my little stint with reverse tie dye. I'll probably still do some because I know it'll sell. I know there are people who really like it. It's just a lot of extra work for me and I still have not learned quite well enough, you know, about the bleaching because I, I did lose about four pieces um, by over bleaching it eight through the shirt. So 
but I had fun with it. It is cool. I just like the I, I just like and think I have more talent on the on the the other side. So then I wanted to get prepared for my one year. I wanted to combine as much as I could. So I got started to get a bunch of large tapestries because I really wanted to challenge myself for that one year. I wanted to do something really big. So to get ready for it, I I said, all right, let me try four big swirls with my diamond em emblem in the middle. That'll be my my building block one, my first step of my building block. And I did, and I was pretty happy. I actually used this to cover my coffee table, the table that you see that I do my, uh, my tie-dye on in my videos. This is actually what covers the table when I'm not working tie-dye on it. And then after that, I did another one, but you know, really playing with the detail on the diamond itself. And I, unfortunately, I didn't pay as much attention to the swirl, but it came out really cool. This one sold really well for, you know, really nice nice top dollar um, and really had me prepared so with that under my belt I was going for my biggest challenge yet I wanted to take a five foot by six foot beautiful piece of cotton material very very thick cotton material and I wanted to do a my like just something amazing I wanted to do this really cool like different diamond in the middle that had like curves instead of straight lines and I wanted the four swirls in the four corners to be emerald new emerald green and I wanted those swirls to kind of make it look like this big cross kind of looking frame was around the entire thing then around the four the diamond in the center I wanted to have coming straight out from the sides and from the top and the bottom four hearts and four diamonds and so I gave it a shot and there it was exactly the way I pictured it I was ecstatic absolutely ecstatic my one year challenge my biggest project was an absolute success I was really happy but like any success, you're only as good as the people behind you. So at the end of my one year anniversary, the first thing that I think of is my thanks. My thanks of how blessed I am for every one of you who watched my videos. I know that I am a nobody out there, you know, when you compare, you know, who's got views and, and everything like that. But I am still humbly thankful for every one of you. I, I live for the better good of all. I just want to do good things for people, lift people up, make them feel a little better than they did before they came across me. I hope I did that for you. Please try and do the same for others. You can even help do the same for me by just a little click of the button on the subscribe button. I put about six hours into even a six minute video with all the editing. Take that one second to do something nice for somebody else and, and give me a click. You'll feel glad you did. Go ahead and do it. So again, we're going to get right down to what are the top things that I've learned in one year of tie-dye. Well, I'll give you a, a bonus one first. Video everything. Because you're going to do something that comes out so cool and you're you're you know you're going to forget exactly how you got it to do what what you wanted it to do and you'll just never get it right again so be sure to video everything number 10 don't be afraid to get in there and try you've absolutely got to do it if you do, and go in there confident it's just like anything in life the more confident and positive you are going in the better a result you're going to get and don't be afraid to fail the failure is how we learn that's how we get better number nine always 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 use gloves and a mask believe me folks this powdered dye is serious serious stuff you do not want to breathe any of it in and it is so the particles are so fine they're as fine as as asbestos is so you you really need to wear the gloves and a mask number eight always get your dye from dharma trading company they're the best people like I said, I'm not sponsored for by them. They're the best people, and they have the best dye out there on the market. The colors hop. They don't always match what you see on the on their charts on, on the screen, but they're always beautiful and they always always pop. So definitely, you know, check them out. 
Number seven, what comes out of the rinse isn't what you get once it's washed. Those of you who've done this for a while, you already know that. Those of you who haven't done it yet, you know, don't worry you know don't get excited and don't panic after you rinse it because once you wash it and dry it it's going to look completely different number six it's always better to use too much dye than too little if you use too little dye all the areas between the folds are going to have all these white lines that's going to make the work look unfinished number five do it for the love of it, not to pay the bills. If you're ever thinking about doing this for a business, believe me folks, nobody's going to pay you anywhere near the value of your time. People want to pay pennies for this stuff, so you really need your right niche. If you want to make money at this, you need to go online or you need to have a great venue like a Grateful Dead concert or, or you know, some kind of big college function, which is kind of hard in the COVID. But do it for the love of it. Next, number four. Tie-dye only takes a few tries to learn, but it definitely takes more than a year to master. I am not a master, folks. I, I definitely don't claim to be. I just try to help people with what I have learned so far. I've done about 350 pieces so far. For one year, that's a lot to get done for one person. You know, I think I've come a long way, but, you know, I look at the masters out there, you know, the people I've listed and others, you know, there, there's so many others. You've got Fun Endeavors, you've got, you've got Mr. Tie-Dye, you've got, there's so many people I'm not even not even remembering crapshoot creations I, I mean there's so many people out there that are so talented you know and and we're all sharing next always have a full plan before you start all my pieces that only came out okay were the ones where I just put it in the soda ash and then popped it on the table and said, hmm, okay, let me, all right, let's try this. And, and I didn't even know what colors I was going to use yet, you know. Plan it all out, you know, have an eye picture in your head of what you, what you want to kind of do. Okay, I want to do a V pattern, I want to try like three lines, I want to kind of curve the lines a little bit, and I want to do it with these colors color combinations the more you know and and picture it ahead of time the better success you're gonna have number two take your time take your time the more patience you have to making these things as perfect as you can if you watch casual collisions you'll see why every one of his pieces comes out a, a, you know just amazing you know, I'm sure he's, well, everybody's going to be their own worst critic. So I'm sure he's going to, you know, be being a humble man that he is. I'm sure he's not going to take the credit anywhere near that he deserves. But he is meticulous about his work and it shows. And that brings me to my number one tip. Never, ever take shortcuts. And Jeremy St. Rebel will tell you the same thing over at Jammin' on Tie-Dye Designs. Every time you take a shortcut, and I do mean every time, because believe me, I've done it a number of times in the 350 pieces, you know, plus pieces that I did. I can tell you, there are times you're going to take a shortcut, and every single one of them, without fail, it shows in the final product. So don't do it, folks. If you're going to do it, do it right, and you'll get the most happiness out of what you're doing. So again, I am living for the better good of all. I hope you are too. Let me know if there's anything you want to do, want, want to do, want to see, want to learn about that I can help you with. I, I can't wait. I, I'm excited for my next year. Don't forget to subscribe. And again, sending that positive energy to you. Diverse Designs, signing out.